My name is Alan, and on behalf of the crew of the show, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. Tonight, we're really honored, as we usually are. I mean, we, we've been so fortunate to have people come from all over the country to share their love and their inspiration and their talents and their gifts and just their vibration of, of peace and, and, and joy with us so often. And tonight we have more of that in spades. We have uh, with us Lama Oli Naidal, who's a Buddhist teacher and master and author who just travels the world spreading his message of, of love and connectedness and inspiration and real joy to, to people all over the world. He, he just... His life is just in one city to the next city to the next city, just teaching and, and just bringing joy. And it's really, it's really an extraordinary honor for Bridging Heaven and Earth to have him with us. And we're also honored tonight to have Timothy Lee, who's a, he's another master. He's a master flutist, or everybody tells me it's flautist, but I never heard anybody play the flout, so I keep calling him flutist. And he makes most of his instruments, so... Uh, and he's going to be playing for us tonight some... He makes sounds come out of that, of the instruments he creates that are just otherworldly. So we're just really honored to have uh, Oli with us tonight and, and Timmy, and I think you're just in for an extraordinary show. So as we usually do at this time, to set a tone for the show and to give, just to quiet us all down from whatever we've done today, whatever problems we've had, whatever good things have, have happened to us, just to come and be in this moment, be in this show, just relax for the next 58 and a half minutes and allow the, the, the guests that we have with us to bring us into an experience of love. So please join me in a short meditation. And as I've, I've said before, if you don't know how to do one, just kind of follow your breath for a little while or just watch me or just... Just try to relax any way you know how to relax. If you know how to do a meditation, do that. And also, Oli uh, is going to lead us in a, in a guided meditation later. So we have two meditations tonight. Okay, so please join me. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to begin the show with Timothy Lee doing an improvisational flute work and just, just relax and enjoy. So Timothy, whenever you're ready.
Hi, thank you, Timmy. That was wonderful. So here I am with Lama Oli. So why don't you just welcome, welcome to Bridging Heaven and Earth. Thanks for yes. coming. Well, thank you, and thank you, thank you for that music. I was really gone, you know. I really <laughs> enjoyed that. That was wonderful, incredible sound. So for people who are unfamiliar, why don't you just explain a little bit about like what Buddhism means yes. and how you know you got started? Well, it. there are different kinds of religions in the world, and uh, Buddhism is a religion of experience, not a religion of faith or belief. And the goal of Buddhism can be said very simply, it's really to experience that our mind is open like space, meaning not a thing, at the same time radiantly clear and conscious, and also without any limit or stop. And the experience of that, of mind itself, are exceedingly blissful. For instance, when we understand that mind is not a thing, we basically become fearless. Because we know bodies get old, sick and die, and thoughts and feelings come and go, but space nobody can harm. And when we are fearless, then all the things happening in mind, you know, all the different experiences inside and out actually become richness. And when one discovers mind is unlimited, one sees we cannot really make a separation between my wish for happiness and your wish for happiness, right? And then one must be kind. Because if one is kind today, one must look 50 or 100 years into the future at the same time, right? Because misguided idealists are very dangerous, right? But, but basically, you know, one cannot avoid being kind if one recognizes the nature of one's mind. Would you say that in that experience you're recognizing that there really is no separation between you and a tree and you and the ocean, you and the dolphin and you and all the other people. You say that there is no separation between space and awareness. This is true. On the other hand, there are some, you know, that which we call human beings, animals and so on, they hold mind. And others are seen as, let's say, a collective dream or a compensation of our subconscious impressions. So there is a difference between, for instance, a human being and the stone, or a human being and the tree, and so on. There is. Mm -hmm. But among the beings who hold mind, an animal, a human, and then certain forms that have no physical bodies we can experience, I mean, there it's the same. Mind is open, clear, limitless space. But when you, when you experience what you experience in a, in a meditation, mm -hmm. in, Part of Buddhism is to, is to come to that open yes. place, to that yes. quiet yes. place, right? When you experience that, would you say that you experience a place where th there's basically one energy? There's just one, yes. there's nothing and everything in that one space? Yes, you can say that space is information, space is bliss, and space is active compassion. This is true. Right. It's not, mind is not a thing. That's what it feels like in a human body. When yes. you have that experience, yes, a yes. human body could say that feels like love, that feels like joy. That, yes, yes. Right? Yes, yes, yes. So, how did you begin? I mean, you know, you're growing up, and how did you become well, a Buddhist master? <laughs> well, it's a long story. Actually, I'm, I'm year 41. I'm 57 years old now. And I You've was been born. doing it for 41 years? No, not quite. Oh. I've been doing it for, I've been doing it for 26 years. Oh, I've 26. been traveling oh. to a new town every day. No, but I was born in Denmark during the German occupation in the Second World War. And at that time, you know, my father was in resistance and everything, and you would actually expect that I would see German soldiers, right, in my nightly war dreams and flat area like Denmark. But I always saw mountains. I always saw men in ladies' clothes. I couldn't understand that till I saw the first monks in robes. Wow. And I understood so this is from the time you were this a young boy. These yeah, were when I was two, three right. years old in Denmark, I was already painting pictures of battles in, in mountain areas and so on. And, and so you were more familiar, almost like, because that would be, people would say that was your last life or yeah, yeah. a yeah, yeah. past life, right? Yes, uh -huh. it's true, it was my yeah. last life. And I know it was the last one because we had rapid fire guns. Oh, so but, you could tell by were, our weaponry yes, how yes, wonderful yes, it yeah, is. Yes, right? yes, and because in, this, in the First World War, the machine guns were invented. Right. And it means it must have been the 20s or the 30s that I remember. Mm. Also, remembering more than one life back is usually very insecure, mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. insecure. So, so you had this connection from, from, yeah, from, from very birth, small, for very, very small, small, and you, you just, and when did it become like a physical reality in this reality? Well, in 68, I had the great luck of going to Nepal with my lovely wife, Hannah, who's also here tonight, right? Mm. And 
We went and we actually saw these men in ladies' clothes that I had dreamt about as a child. Yeah, you see them a lot in L.A. Uh, yes, right. now different you see a little. No, <laughs> a little, little different. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to talk about it. It's okay. a family show here. Okay, 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 okay. Well, anyway, you know, you see them. Well, you saw, them. I mean, monks' robes, right? right? And in Denmark, I mean, we don't have things like that, so I had no idea. And we started seeing them, and we had like this recognition. We said, hey, we know them, we know them. You know, of course, we didn't know the language, but they came to us, Hannah and I went to them. And, you know, and it was just a very close so bond. So immediately you became like, like a family. student or yes, family and family. just started well, living there. And more than that, I became a bodyguard again. You know, I became a bodyguard of the Kamapai again. You know, the Kamapai, the first incarnate Lama of Tibet, where the Dalai Lama is actually a student of a student of the fourth Kamapai. You know, Kamapa, Kamapa is Kamapa, the first yeah. the first incarnate Lama of Tibet. Well, we became his students again, you know, like very quickly again, you know, and he gave us a job we've then been doing around the world ever since. So, so he told you to go and spread Buddhism? Well, in a we, certain we way. don't, yeah, we don't quite do that. We don't missionarize, right? But he said after we'd spent three years in the Himalayas and done the preparatory school and so on, the foundations and so on, then he said, go home and see if some of your friends are interested, right? And some friends were interested. Right. They were back from the old drug days before a long time ago. Right, he didn't tell you to go out and take the land no, from no, the no, Indians. No, no, and he <laughs> did, no, no, he didn't tell us either to tell people to overpopulate the world or anything. You know, it's very right. reasonable. Buddhism is reasonable, right? right? It's the middle path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, and so every day for the last 26 years, Yeah, I've sense, been in a new town teaching. New town we teaching. have no home, no anything. Well, we have a couple of nice quick cars we can and use when you add the motorcycle. <laughs> yes, yes. And, like and stuff like so, that. And, and you teach a certain form of Buddhism yes. called the Diamond Way. And yes. It's a certain, it, now, why don't you explain to people but Buddhism, how the, structure the lineage is. Yeah, the structure. Okay. I mean, you know, just yes. simply. Yes, just, yes. Okay, okay, right. good. Well, Buddhism is a, a religion of experience. And it was given for three kinds of people. It was given for the people who want to get out of their own problems, you know, I mean, people who would rather not get too involved. Then it was given for, they usually become monks and nuns and sort of avoid life. Then it was given for the lay people who want to function and leave a, leave a, a track like a steamroller, you know, mm -hmm. through society mm -hmm. and make something happen. Mm -hmm. And then for the yogis who want to keep the highest view. And it actually consists of this, uh, this horizontal, uh, uh, let's say, leveling corresponds to also a vertical leveling, where there is one level of teaching which has to do with information, with questions, and there must be questions. Then meditation, so what was understood goes to the heart and mixed into life. And finally, then also holding whichever level is reached. These, like you can say, nine cupboards, in the or nine drawers in the big carpet, you know, of the mm -hmm. teachings, course holds the whole. So teaching. when you go to a city, do you, you know, you teach like yes. the multitudes yes, or a yes. lot of people. Sure, sure. Yeah. So you teach everyone like in a sense individually because each person wants something from a different cupboard, right? Mm -hmm. Or or is ready for a, a, yeah, a different do. shirt. Or well, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> everyone I mean, has to wear t-shirts. The understand. buckshot <laughs> model. It's the buckshot. Oh, it model, is the buckshot. Know, I have. Oh. Yeah, I mean. Because I, so, oh, because you're gone too fast. You don't yes, really can't I'm, really I'm have one, individual. I'm one or two days everywhere. I'm not more than that. So you're so just I, trying to kind of light the flame and just yes, ignite. I make, I give a teaching that is so wide that people can find out, I want this, I want that, I want that. And you've written a and lot of books, too, yeah, that, also that, that bring sure, that. Sure, sure. And then people know if they should stay with the Diamond Way, with Kachi Buddhism, which I represent, if they should go to the which Theravada. Which is one of the lineages. Yes, yes, right. of the Tibetan Buddhism. Right. Or if they should go to the Theravada or Mahayana school like the Gelugpas or something like that. But really the most important thing in... In, well, in, almost in any tradition or any religion, any true religion, is the experience of that. Yes, sure, However, sure, sure, you describe sure, sure, it, the sure. infinite love, yes, truth, God. Yes, you know. yes. And, and giving people a chance to, to lead have it, that right? experience. Yes, yes, right. Yes, yes. Okay, so you're going to do a guided meditation oh, tonight, and hopefully, to. I'd love to. You know, I'd some of us here, maybe me. <laughs> Everybody's heads will turn green right, and fall. Yeah, off, yeah, right. right. So that's what we're hoping for. That's okay. Okay, we'll do that. So okay, whenever you're ready, just I'm you know, very ready okay, right now. So let's okay, do a guided meditation from. Uh, Lama Oli. So, you sit as straight as you can. You know, it's not important what you do with your legs, but if you keep your back straight, there's a better awareness. Chin or chins in, all four, as they say in Danish. <laughs> and now we just feel the former stream of air coming and going at the tips of our nooses.
thoughts and ideas we just let go by, we don't think good or bad, we don't hold on or push away. We just feel the way the stream of air comes and goes at the tips of our noses. And now we think that we want to work with our minds so we can become able to benefit all beings everywhere. Remember impermanence, that it's important to do things now, cause and effect that we create our own lives. And finally that enlightenment is the greatest joy and one can keep it. Now in front of us, that condenses out of space, the golden transparent form of the Buddha. And as let take perfect shape of golden energy and light. We understand it's not a god or a person, but that the truth and joy of space is now expressing itself like that in order to show us our own nature. We understand that whether we see Buddha clearly or not, then truth and awareness cannot be separated and wherever we even think of enlightenment, it's already there. We wish deeply to obtain all the qualities of the Buddha and as he feels our wish, he smiles and comes down through space towards us. His golden transparent form comes ever closer and now it stays at a pleasant distance in front of us. We recognize the great opportunity we have to learn and grow right now. And we think the way I say, Dearest Lama, you who are the essence of all the Buddhas, of you we ask, give us your power which removes the ignorance and obscuration of all beings and ourselves. Let the timeless clear light, the true nature of mind, awaken inside us. We make this wish strongly that now all clouds and confusion may leave the minds of all beings and ourselves, and that we may recognize that what's experiencing now, what's hearing, feeling, being aware at this moment, is radiant light beyond the birth and death and perfect. As Buddha feels as he smiles, and now from the place between his eyebrows in his forehead, an intense crystal clear light shines out. It radiates from the center of his forehead into the center of our forehead, it shines into our head, and fills the whole brain area of our head with intense crystal clear light. through the power of the clear light. Now everything disturbed in our brain, nerves and senses dissolves. Impressions of clumsy and harmful actions disappear. And our body becomes a conscious tool to give protection and love, to give others what they need. Stay with the radiant light filling our heads. And at the same time, we feel the inner vibration of the syllable. Om. We hold the radiant light and the vibration of Om in our heads as well as we can. We can do nothing better for our bodies than this right now. Now from Buddha's throat in front of us, a deep warm red light shines out, radiates from his throat into our mouth and throat, and fills our whole speech center with intense red light. Through the power of the red light, now everything harmful in our speech disappears. Impressions of clumsy and 
harmful expressions dissolve and our speech becomes compassion and wisdom, becomes a conscious tool to benefit others. Stay with the red radiant light filling our mouth and throat. And at the same time, we hear the inner vibration of the syllable. Ah. We hold light and vibration in mouth and throat together as well as we can. Now from the center of Buddha's chest at the level of the heart, from this transparent central chest, a deep, strong blue light shines out, radiates right into the center of our chest and fills the middle of our rib cage with intense blue light. Through the power of the blue light, now everything disturbed in our mind disappears. Mixed feelings, stiff ideas dissolve. And our mind becomes spontaneous joy. Joy which appears naturally out of space, which has no other cause than space itself. Stay with the blue light filling the center of our chest. And at the same time, we feel the inner vibration of the syllable. Hum. H-U-N-G. Hum. Vibrating in the center of our chest. Now Buddha in front of us begins to dissolve more and more into rainbow light. He fills the whole space around us. He smiles at us. And the last we hear is his promise that he will be there always whenever we need him. That he'll condense in countless forms in order to benefit us whenever we or others are open to his blessing and his power. We keep this feeling of the white, the red and the blue lights having blessed us deeply, of space around us now being our friend and protective and taking care of us. And more and more now, we feel our bodies as they are here. The outer world appears as a pure land. Every atom vibrates with joy, is kept together by love. Everything is meaningful, whether it appears or not. We feel all the beings everywhere, human or otherwise. And every one of them has the Buddha nature. Their mind is timeless, clear light. And now, we begin to feel our own body. But there's a very big difference to before. Before we were our bodies, and we were vulnerable through old age, sickness and death. Now it's different. Now we have a tool. Our body and speech are methods we will use for the benefit of all. And we finish with the wish that all the good that happened here through this very fine show and our meeting, that this may become limitless, that it may stream out to all beings everywhere, that it may remove their suffering and give them the only lasting joy, which is that of knowing their minds. And this meditation you can do if you want. It will bless you and it will benefit you. Because Buddha is like space where you think of him, he's there.
I am so cleaned out, I can't speak. Oh, the show like... has to be over. Uh, well, let me ask you something. I mean, yeah. like, you know, when people visualize Buddhist masters, they visualize saffron robes and, yeah. you know, yes, and, yes. and you come in, and, yes, yes, yes. you know, not celibate. You definitely know, not def celibate. Def definitely not definitely celibate. Not celibate. Oh, no. Riding a motorcycle yes, please. with only yes. t-shirts. He said, <laughs> you know, he was oh, only came by my house before the show, so we were talking, and he said, well, which shirt should I wear? I said, well, let me see him. So he pulls out two t-shirts. He's got a whole t-shirt collection. That's <laughs> it. So I said, well, I don't know. I guess it's... I also have a polo yeah, shirt. It's, it's right. I also have a polo right. shirt. It's the stripes. I guess it's okay. Yeah. So. Uh, so how do people respond to that? I mean, it's like a concept breaker that, you know, that that wisdom and that yeah. experience could come in in a package that doesn't fit the image. Now, in Europe, they're happy. They're very happy. You know, we've had so we've had a thousand years where the state and the church ganged up on the people, you know, to put them down. Right. Mm -hmm. If the state didn't catch you in this life, the church would catch you after this life. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we're quite wary of robes and stuff like that, especially the young generations. Right. Mm -hmm. So they're just happy. They say, ah, we don't need all the outer stuff. Let's get the main mind teaching and let's go so on you, to you that. You find people being open to that, really being oh, yes, receptive yes, 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 and yes, they yes, don't yes. look to... No, no, people distrust too much outer stuff. It's like, I mean, the goal is really you have an experience or you and don't. people want it, right? right? Yeah, and, yeah. you know, first you put on all kinds of funny clothes, means you take a big step away from people. And then you have to say, listen, but actually I'm like you anyway, you can use my experience, right? Mm -hmm. It's like a big step over and a big step back, which is necessary. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Buddha wore his clothes. I mean, okay, he made his clothes very consequently impractical. The robes, the main job of the Buddhist robes is to be impractical. So people have to sit down and think and they can't run around all the time, right? Mm -hmm. right. And that is for monks and nuns, that's the basic thing there. But mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a yogi, other people are lay people. Mm -hmm. And if they are like that, you know, I mean, they should just be in the middle of life. No, I, and, to and me, function. it's really, it's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, it's yeah. just a concept yeah. that somebody who is having a certain experience will look yeah. a certain way. Yeah, no, no. Or we dress, to, you know, no. or, or ride a certain, in a certain car or, you know, something like that. And it's, no, I try it's to good that that's, that's, you know, no, breaking down. I try to avoid down. that we don't need that. I mean, then we be, then we become a church, right? Right. Then we yeah, become then like holy cows. Then we right. Dead, yes. Right? No, then it's all please. faith and tradition and, and no yeah, experience. No, 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 no. no. Please. No. And, and how do you, how do you find? I, you might not be in a city long enough, but how do you find that people want you to be their guru and want you to have the experience in a sense for well, them, rather than they well, you teach them to have the experience? Yeah. I've been starting. I started 200 centers around the world, you know, and I travel all the time. It means I'm about two days in every center. So it's hard for less, people right? to get attached to you. Yes, except but the a lot who travel here. with me. A lot travel <laughs> along. No, a lot travel <laughs> along. You know, we are not quite like God's children or whatever they were called in the 60s right, world. Well, right. But we are often we're 100 people going across really? Russia and stuff like that. Sure, we are. And you just go but, all over the world. Yeah, I mean, I can, Russia. Sure, I mean, sure, sure. I say there are some places I stay away from. I don't go to Islamic countries because I would not be able to protect my students there. If some mullah comes in and starts cutting their heads, you know, I right. can't protect them. Don't go to Africa, same reason I can't protect them, right? Mm -hmm. But anywhere there's a certain level of civilization and so on, I always go. I mm -hmm. actually do. And, and, you know, it's a new town nearly every day and it's a joyful life. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very good how life. Do, just describe how you would feel about like the student teacher relationship I would say that I see myself I, you see I see myself as people's teacher because I do and say the same thing I represent a certain modern way of using Buddhism and I'm totally honest I'm actually very 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 honest we've had all the scandals we've had in Buddhism Hinduism Christianity everywhere has always been because the teachers were not honest I've studied all the case histories mm -hmm. everyone you know and there are a lot of people who don't like me because I'm not politically correct. There are a lot of people who don't like me because I'll shake them up if I don't like them, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm a former boxer, you know, mm -hmm. I'm quite, quite effective if I have to, and so on and stuff. So they I better don't be like nice that. to you. You are nice to oh me, my right? God. and you're my friend gonna, anyway. Right? Right? Oh my God, he's going to thrash me. Oh my. <laughs> no, it's no. never happened. This, this is the 61st we, show. Okay, we've we never had a thrash. A slow strangulation. Right. What do you say to that? Huh? <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> Well, so, anyway, yes, you know, there are a lot of people who don't like, but I'm always honest. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's my strong thing, and that's what I'm teaching my students. Would you say you're always honest or always honest as you know? As yeah. you know I'm always as honest as, as I can, can be. be. As I'm honest as I can be. And the important thing is, you know, I've trained, you know, I mean, all of those 200 centers have mm -hmm. teachers. Right. 
uh, homegrown teachers and there are about 30 I've taught to travel around the world and visit all the places and so on. So there's quite a lot happening. So, so we are trying to build up quicker than the Chinese can destroy, right? That's more or less the balance I'm looking at. We have to keep the wisdom, that great wisdom of Tibet, you know, the great mind wisdom of Buddhism. We have to build that up in the West quicker than the communist Chinese can destroy so it in if Tibet. if people aren't really familiar with that, what's happening, yeah. or what happened is, oh. uh, yeah, oh. why don't you just, oh. I mean, you probably know oh. better. Oh. It's a, oh. 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 It's a real Really stinker. bad. Yeah, it's a bad one. Okay, 51, just, yes, yeah. Mao Zedong, uh, he, he got China in 49, 51, 50, 51, the winter, they already took eastern Tibet. 59, they took central and western Tibet. Um, and since that time, the Chinese have killed, out of a population of six million people, they've killed a million and a half, between 1.2. That is major genocide. It's not as... And not, it's no, no, not, it's not baby stuff. No, it's not one nice. out of four, one out of five. And they have brought about seven and a half million Chinese into the country. You know, it's mean like they're already a minority in their own country and they have no posts or anything. And they have to fight to keep their culture and so on. You know, some are allowed to wear robes and so on, but they're not allowed to get an education, right? So, uh, when Buddhism got into Tibet, you know, it was when the Muslims destroyed the high culture of northern India a thousand years ago. They got in, they stayed for a thousand years, then they come out again when the communists came in and had destroyed everything. And the first ten years, from 59 to 69, they actually tried. They tried very hard to keep the teachings among themselves. But so many died from TB, so many, and the young people spread out. And then 69, they started teaching the Westerners. It was a come up, I said, start teaching them. And Hannah and I were there at that time. And we, st we stayed there. There was about maybe six, eight Westerners at that time who were still our friends in France and Japan, you know, different places and so on. Today. And from them we grew. From then, then, and we then worked together around the world after that. So, it's just an extraordinary thing that's going on. To, yeah. So what you're saying is like to keep that knowledge going. Yes. I mean, it has to be, you know, just spread. It has to be alive. It has to you be cannot. Alive. You cannot do your diamond way, which is experience. You cannot do from a book. Theravada and Mahayana you can do from a book. Vajrayana, diamond way, you cannot do from a book. There has to be some experience that is transferred, that is mm -hmm. passed over. It has to be that. There's also a story. I mean. I, I heard this, and I'm not sure of all the details, but that you're the lineage holder in your lineage, how that works, the karma or the shrama I can never yeah, get yeah. straight. Chow, chow. But there's a young boy who you had to go into Tibet and basically wow. That's sneak out as yeah. it were, you know, yeah. when your life was in danger and his okay. life was in danger okay, and you okay. had to thrash a few people. No, I don't uh, know. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> well, it's a little, let's say that the plan for the, you know, that we got come up out, you know, the, the 17th Kamapa Thai Dojo, we and cut him out. And that's the lineage, that's the, that the holder the of, yes, that yes, of that line of Buddhism. Yes, yes. Right. Okay. There, is a, there is a political child that the Chinese chose, at that some of our lamas accepted so they could be allowed to build monasteries in, in Tibet, which is con right. conquered by China. And then there is a real Kamapa whom we got out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, actually the Dalai Lama made a big mistake and accepted the Chinese child. And I actually told him three times, I said, listen, if you accept that we get a Kamapa you don't, we don't want, you'll get a Panchen Lama you don't want, right? And he will choose a Dalai Lama nobody wants, right? So, so, it was so really that's in the very, process very, very perhaps dangerous. of happening. Yeah, I'm afraid that's happening and that's very dangerous. That's very, 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 very and, and that attitude of yours probably doesn't sit well with the Dalai Lama and his followers. No, he's my real close friends. The Dalai Lama and I myself, he stayed when he, when he went to the Nobel Prize. He spent four days in Copenhagen, in our big center there, and stuff like that. No, it's just, you know, his, his, his government doesn't do what he says a lot of the time, I think. You mean his, like his... His, his government, yeah, in Dharamsala. Oh, I see. I his don't think they always do what he says. I don't think they do, so you know. that's not a good idea, right? No. That is, <laughs> well, it's supposed, they're supposed to be democratic on the other side, you know. They also right. want to follow him. It's not an easy balancing act. It's a, it's a line I use a lot. It's a line from, uh, uh, what is it, Jerry Garcia, what a long, oh. what a long strange trip it is. Huh? A yeah, lot, of, lot of stuff yeah, going on. True. All right, so now I think we're ready. Uh, Tim is going to uh, yeah. honor us with Please. another song. He's yeah. going to do a, a flute improvisation. And uh, whenever you're ready, Tim, take her away. Thank you.
Thank you, Tim. That was wonderful. I think we lost Oli, so I'm going to have to finish the last 10 minutes of the show on, on a solo. <laughs> I'll give it. It was beautiful. <laughs> right, I, know. I felt him just, Oli just lifted off here, and oh my God, grab his bike or something. <laughs> Uh, so I, I've seen tapes you've done, and, yes. and you talk a lot about joy. Why don't you talk about that? Because the to joy. me, that, real, yeah, yeah. that really means yeah. something. It's also really important because, I mean, people look for a kind of flimsy, superficial joy, and at the same time, they can have a joy that never dies. I mean, That's not dependent on anything. No, no. no. Listen, right. Everybody knows the pleasant pictures in the mirror, right? They know I'm feeling good because they know they've tried feeling bad like this, right? Like the pleasant and unpleasant picture. But this you can never trust. It's like you're happy because you're young, beautiful, potent, rich, whatever, right? And you know, then after a while here and teeth fall I hear, out I and don't the know. ladies <laughs> run away and whatever, right? right? Okay, so I mean, so this cause of joy is gone. But there's something else. Also. There aren't just the pictures in the mirror, there's also the mirror itself. Aren't just the nice waves to surf or the difficult waves to surf, but there's also the ocean. They aren't just the things we are aware of, but there's also that which is aware. Which is aware of, which yes, is, is the awareness, awareness, right. And if you get to the moments we experience awareness itself, like the best moments of lovemaking and the best curve on the motorcycle and the free fall before we open the parachute, I mean, with all these different things, in those moments we are aware, but not being aware of anything, just naked awareness. As we're, we we're begin, alive. Yeah, At that moment, we're that alive. That is what we are, and we are intensely blissful. We right. are amazingly so intensely be, so blissful. So being in the moment is bliss. Is bliss. Is bliss. Right. Because that's it's the only place you're alive. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, right. you, you nobody can't be alive got enlightened right. yesterday, and nobody right. got enlightened right. tomorrow, right? Always right. Right. Completely so, right. So the, 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 the teachings, that you is, be is, here is now. to be yeah. here now. Be here now. Okay. And we use the method where we dissolve the Buddhas into ourselves. Everything disappears in space. There's only awareness, but not aware of anything. Just awareness, not needing any crutches or anything to hold on to. And then letting a pure world appear out of that again, you know, as space, as the free play of space, as space giving itself a gift and experiencing its power and qualities. This is what it's about. And so the more a human being experiences that place or that joy, the more you want it and the more you're... The uh, more you can pass possibly, it on. Yeah, you, right. You will pass it on. You'll be vibrating more yeah, of that, yeah. that energy. Oh, You'll I, be a walking joy. I'll tell you one thing. Uh, the 16th Kamapa, he came here to California. He came here, you know, he came many places. And I tell you, that man, if he was standing in the middle of this room, the whole, everybody would just vibrate up against the walls, you know, just without him doing anything. He was so powerful, you know, he was a joy, like, my, see, my hair stands up on my arms when I talk about it, right? I mean, But the 17th, he can... Oh, you know, the 17th no, would be exactly the same. The 17th no. would be I thought great. the 16th had... The 16th already <laughs> said, you know, the 17th would be bigger, but he also said he will be milder. milder. You know why? Because he said that time people will be even more confused. So I've got to be extra mild, gentle, right? extra gentle. gentle. Yes, yes. Right. It, it's That's a difficult. Well, I, um, do you see anything like in terms of like history of time coming into the you know the year two thousand? Oh, I see big problems. Big, big problems. Problem. Big problems. Do you see big solutions? Well, you no, use I your see, other head. I will tell you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> good. I see overpopulation and Islam. These two things are dangerous. In Europe, here in Islam, that's just some things in the ghettos, right? But in Europe, it's a massive problem. And also, you know, because, I see because, overpopulation. And why is that? Because it's suppressing women. It's suppressing women in a terrible way, you know. It's, it's totally fanatical. It does not accept democracy. It's not democracy. about love. It's not about it, joy and no, love. No, and it doesn't accept democracy. It doesn't accept, you know, constitutions and stuff like that. They say we have the Koran and that's what we need, right? And we understand and the Koran. Leg and legs off. Right. And, 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 sure, sure. Sure, right. Head off, <laughs> whatever, right. Right? right? I mean, it's dangerous. And, and overpopulation is the worst. That's the thing that hurts me most. They go to a poor country and people really do not have the chance for a life like we know it, right? Go somewhere, see some nature, feel free, feel happy, you know, get an education, you know, you know, all these things, you know, that we could, we just think it's boring that we get it, right? But in Africa, South America, many places in Asia and so on, that's what those people dream about, right? And if they could have two kids instead of 20, you know, or one instead of 10, you know, and educate them and stuff like that, we'd have a wonderful world. But tell that to the Pope. Tell that to who, you know. Who he's, he's the guest next week, so I will tell him. Okay, no. okay, you tell him that. <laughs> tell him that. 
tell him people oh. should not have children. They Mr. Pope, educate yeah, and right. I'm going right. to get Mr. Pope. A I say this debate, the debate with the Pope on abortion. That should be an interesting No, no, not show. abortion. Uh, conception. 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 Abortion, abortion. we try to avoid. Yeah. <laughs> At all costs. Really, yes, yes. Uh -huh. uh, Anti-conception anti methods, you can do that. You can, there are so many things to lessen fertility and still have a happy nightlife. It's possible. And educate the children and... Oh, Imagine you went so, to Africa. So let me ask you. So okay. So these yeah. are the problems coming into yeah. the, the new age. What are the solutions? Solutions are thinking, dropping all this. What's it called? Political correctness and talking around the bush and not pointing to the problems and stuff like that. Being completely honest and saying these are the things we need to do for the world to make a better world. Right? Aim for three billion people and not 12 like we are on the way for like three billion people with education with enough rough material and everything proper education demo democracy all the things we need right health care everything this we should really focus the world should really focus on those goals so do, do you see that that Happening? message spreading or that message yes it is spreading. is spreading it is spreading it's spreading very well it is spreading but it's not spreading fast enough and we will have big problems Big problems. The centers of many European towns will burn within five years. There will be clashes. There will be a lot of trouble. Be because there's just too many rats in the maze? Yes, because no, <laughs> because simply the Brooklyn. systems, the <laughs> systems will clash, the <laughs> systems will squeeze, you know, and we'll have, you had your ghetto things in Watts and other places. We will get them in Europe now. We'll get them. They're so already even, growing. even with what what is obviously a, a, the spreading message of Buddhism. I mean, yes. you, know, you go around, you got 200 centers, and that, yeah. you know, that, doing the best that energy is spreading. You, yes. you still well, think that there will be this explosion of... We're just a few thousand people here and a few thousand people there. I mean, we're not so many. You know, I mean, we're not so many. I mean, we can do our best, and we do do our best, but against the demographics and the different developments of the world, we're just a grain mm. in the bucket. Mm. I'm sorry. No, you're I wish we weren't. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we're nearing the end of the show. So, I um, mean, I just want to, you know, thank everybody for watching. And I, I want to thank, thank you. And really, I getting to know you, Alan. I'm very happy about that. Yeah. Really, I'm yeah. very happy. No, I'm happy too. I think you're doing a good job. And uh, Timmy, I'd like yeah, to thank Tim. Timmy for yeah. doing, you know, just incredible music. And if you want any information about where Oli's talking or. Uh, holding workshops or opening centers or where the centers are or where Tim, Tim makes and sells instruments. Uh, call me, Alan, 805-687-2053. That's Alan, 805-687-2053. Also, I don't know if you saw it, scroll across the bottom of the screen, but uh, check out our internet site. It's www.heaventoearth.com. All right? So good night. God bless you. Actually, there was one thing I, I did want to say, is that there's another site that's playing full Bridging Heaven and Earth shows on the Internet. It's spiritweb.org, www.spiritweb.org. So check out that site under audio, video, and then there's a whole Bridging Heaven and Earth site. So pl please check out our site and that other site. Good night. God bless you. Thanks for coming. <laughs>